Hello, my name is Tiffany, and I'm the dyer and maker behind Leitau Valley Fiber Co. On this week's episode, I talk about Pikachu and a few hats. So if that interests you, let's get started. A few admin details. If you want to go shopping, you can do that at LeitauValleyFiberCo.etsy.com. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can do that at Leitau Valley Fiber Co. Or if you'd like to message me, you can do that at lvfiberco at gmail.com. Hi, and thank you so much for joining me today. It is June 22nd, a um, fairly warm day here in eastern Washington, lots of sunshine. I've already been out to weed the garden, so now I'm inside to chat a little bit with y'all about my knitting. Um, Today, I'm going to talk about a project I'm working on for my son. It's a stuffy, and it's a Pikachu stuffy. So I went online and found a free pattern for this stuffy. And the one I am using is, it's called Pikachu Pal. And this is what it looks like. This is a free pattern that I found on Ravelry actually. And um, you know, when you don't pay for a pattern, you kind of get what you pay for, which is not anything because it's free. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about my challenges with this pattern. Um, the yarn they suggested was the Bernat, and actually this has no designer. Hmm. Well, if you go on to um, Ravelry, I'm sure you can find it. Pikachu Pal is the pattern name. And they suggested using um, Bernat Blanket Yarn in yellow and black. And um, this is this is how it, it looks here. Um, it's knit. Uh, and you'll see the, one of the problems that I um, <laughs> have come across is that this is what I have. Um, this is the body and the head. Um, and you'll notice that this is um, not knit. Well, it, it is knit versus like crochet, but it has um, garter stitch instead of the stockinette stitch, which the pattern has. Um, I'll post a picture here because I'm not sure that you can see this very well, but this is just a stockinette stitch for the body. And what I have is garter stitch. Now, I followed the pattern as it said, <laughs> and this is what I have. So I'm not sure how they um, got the stockinette stitch. It says, now this is a free pattern, so I, I'm not giving anything away. Um, Pikachu body, cast on 24 stitches. Second row, knit three rows. It doesn't say to knit in the round at all. It doesn't say to, to connect it. Um, it just says cast on 24 stitches and then knit three rows. So, I was about halfway through the body when I realized that he wasn't going to have stockinette um, body here. So um, I thought, well, I could rip it out and then join it in the round and then I would get the stockinette. Um, but I didn't do that, as you can see. I just continued going. So that is one of the things that 
I guess the pattern is, um, it just assumes that you know to knit, to join it in the round and knit. Now I don't have this guy stuffed yet, so he's folding in a lot, but um, I feel like they should have just added, you know, cast on 24 stitches, join in the round. And then that would have been very helpful. So, um, I have the body and the head done. And then I've moved on to the feet. And the same thing. Same thing. Um, it says to cast on nine stitches. Down here. And then knit one row. And then knit front back, knit two, repeat two times. Um, so again, this is a garter stitch. It's not knit stitch. And the foot looks knit. So, um, yeah, I guess it'll be okay. I could rip it out, but since I've done the full body and head, I kind of am like, well, it'll be fine. There'll be a lot more texture to it with the garter. So I have finished one foot and I just need to attach it to the body, but I need to stuff the body first. And then this is the second foot and I just need to join it here and stitch it together and then you flatten it like so and then attach it to the underside um so will my son love it absolutely regardless of how it looks <laughs> or how it doesn't look like the pattern um so I think we've talked about this in the past that you you some patterns are um, they they walk you through every single step and some patterns do not so you just have to um, you have to either pull it out and restart knitting or you just go with it. And that's what I chose to do this time around. So that is my son's Pikachu Pal. I should have it done this week, I hope. I was supposed to do it for him for Christmas, but I got really busy and um, didn't get around to it. So he's going to get it for Christmas in July. Hopefully it'll be before July, but we'll see. Okay, the next couple of things that I have are hats. And um, the first two are made out of uh, Malabrigo Noventa yarn, which I bought at my local yarn store, Paradise Fiber. And um, it's in the super, super bulky. The first one here is this lovely hat. And this colorway is called... Poseon. Poseon. Um, this pattern, I followed the, the same pattern on um, YouTube. I'll post it here because I don't remember. Was it the Crazy Hands Knitting and Crochet on YouTube? This is one of her patterns, so I'll, I'll put it here. So this hat, I did a two by two rib. I cast on 60 stitches and then I knit for eight inches before I started decreasing. And I actually had to decrease quite rapidly because I was running out of yarn. Um, so I had just a hair left when I finished um, binding off. So this hat is style uh it's the it's a beanie style hat um but it's beautiful i love the colors how they pop 
in and throughout the pattern. Um, it's very pretty. So this would fit like um, a youth or a woman's head probably. And then the second hat that I knit out of the Noventa is called Cowboy and it's this beautiful blue. And I did cast on uh, 44 stitches for this one. And I did a one by one rib, which is I knit one and then I purled one and went around for the 44 stitches. And then the pattern is just stockinette stitch. And this is a man's size hat. It would fit a man. Um, or if you, you um, wanted it slouchy, um, a woman could wear it or a youth. So, and this one's really pretty. It's got, it's mostly blue, but it has um, blue purples in here too. So it's very pretty. Yeah. And I like how the decreases on the crown make this star effect. So that's pretty cool. Um, it makes it fit your head a little bit better too, which is nice. So yeah, this is my second finished object. Um, hats, I have these, these two will go in my, in my shop. Um, probably in September maybe. Um, so I'm going to hold off on putting them in my shop until September. Um, cause it's summertime and no one's really buying hats right now. Um, that was it for the Noventa, the Malabrigo Noventa. I had bought 13 skeins to make hats and that was the, la the last two. So my last finish object is the Afghan Hound hat and I was so close to finishing it last time but not quite there well today here you go it's finished I'm so excited so um, for those of you who don't know this is Afghan hound uh, fiber it um, was taken from two different Afghans. Um, I'm trying to remember their names. Cosmo is one of them. He's the fawn. Um, Cosmo, Omni, Omni and Cosmo. Oh, I can't remember. Corey, you'll have to put it below. Um, but Cosmo is for sure the, um, the fawn one. And they, they were spun together. So part of this, they're, um, the two colors are together. And then for part of it, there's just the dark hair and then just the fawn color. So I, I think it looks okay. Um, it's kind of a striping pattern. So I think it looks great actually. Um, I'll have to see it on her to kind of solidify in my mind that it'll be okay. But, um, and then on the top, I also, oh, let me go back. I used three skeins of the yarn from the Afghan hounds. And towards the end um, of the skein was good because I got this lovely little patch here of the two colors blended together to make kind of a star shape on the top. So I was pretty happy with that and how it turned out. I don't remember how many I cast on, I think 60 stitches, and then I did a two by two rib along um, for two inches before I did started the stockinette stitch. And I knit for eight inches and then um, decreased. So this is going to its new home next week. Corey, are you excited? That's the end of that um, project. I'm done with hats for a little bit, which um, is kind of good because I have a few more things that I would like to do for myself as well. Um, 
I have one project that I'm working on that is a mending project. Sorry, I'm sitting on the trailing yarn here. I'm mending a pair of my husband's socks. And I have mended these twice. No, this is the second time that I'm mending. So I am not too pleased with this yarn. Um, this pair of socks is a, it's a shorty pair. And I actually don't remember the yarn and where I got it. But he's not generally hard on his wool socks. So the fact that I've had to knit this twice, I'm not too impressed. Okay, and besides that. Anyway, um, so I always have scrap yarn around and I keep um, my sock yarn scraps in a spot and my worsted weight, my DK in a spot. So that's just for these type of situations. <laughs> um, here's the first mending that I did down here on the, just around the heel. And then this one's around the toe. So the new hole is just slightly lower than that and also along the edge here of the toe. So I do a, um, cross hatch, I think that's what it's called, where you build up, you run all of your stitches this way of, of the yarn that you're using to mend it. So I put in over here where it was, um, there was still some good yarn over on this side. And then I ran the yarn here and then back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then I came down and up and down and up and down and up. And as you're doing that, it builds the fabric um, a little bit thicker there. And um, as you can see by this, I, this one was a complete hole here. So that was really challenging to build that kind of lattice. Um, but it's held up. It's even started to felt a little bit. Um, but it's not um, worn. So this method works really well. Um, even down here on this area. See? And I did this probably two months ago maybe. So it's holding up pretty good there. Um, so that's the one thing about knits is you have to be able to mend them because you're going to have wear, especially socks. Um, but sometimes sweaters and things like that too around your elbows. Um, so it's good to know how to mend as well. And I have tried, there's a couple different methods that you can do, but I have found for myself that this is actually the easiest because you're just kind of weaving and pushing it over and creating this lovely fabric. Um, and my husband actually doesn't mind the texture too much when he's walking because pretty quick, it felts like this one up here and there's no lumpy texture. So yeah, so that's the first pair, the first set. I'm working on the second one because um, this one also. So look at the heel of this. It was huge. And part of it was completely gone. There was only like the nylon left very teeny tiny string going up so um <clears throat> but here i'm starting at the bottom and i'm working my way up so i'll meet this um it looks like i'll actually go into this a little bit here um to uh to create it so it yeah, oh my goodness. Oh, and look at this. <laughs> There's a legit hole. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So thankfully, I have a whole lot of sock yarn. And it doesn't need to be the same color, which is cool too. You can use 
and then it's it's fun you know and you can see it <laughs> so this one I'm in the middle of working on um, and uh, then he'll have those ready for him again to wear I don't know how this is the first pair I've had to knit or to mend twice so I am kind of curious how often or how many times it would take um, before it's just, you would just say, oh, I'm done with this and knit a whole new pair of socks. Um, mending does go faster. I mean, I knit socks a pair in 18 hours. Um, so mending is way faster than that. But at some point you go, well, this is gonna be too much time to mend. So I'm just gonna knit you a whole new pair of fresh socks. And I suppose at some point you do get to that. I just don't know what it would be. Um, Cause the rest of the sock is completely fine. You know, there's hardly any, well, there's a little felting here, um, but there's no, it's completely usable, you know completely wearable so that's kind of yeah my thoughts on that okay so that's it for all my knitting um, I did want to just mention before I go here that I am running a sale on certain items in my shop and it is going on until tomorrow so if you want to take a look at that you can check it out at Lata Valley Fiber Co .etsy.com um, yeah Otherwise, that's it for this week, guys. I hope you have a lovely weekend, um, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.